Today, the streets of downtown Calgary look dramatically different, but thousands protested this summer in solidarity with the Black Lives Matter movement to change the status quo for black, indigenous and people of color in this city. I sit down with Black Lives Matter YYC executive director and musician KL to talk about what's been accomplished and why he's hopeful for the future. I think this year was definitely historical. Um, we had a lot of people like even in city council telling us that those were the biggest protests Alberta had ever seen. Uh, so I'm, I'm proud to be able to say that, uh, but I still feel that uh, we, we got a lot of work to do though. You know, a lot of people don't have a voice or don't get a chance to be heard or don't have access to media. So the only place they can really go is the street and to hit the protests with us. And I feel that um, so many people feel that they relate to what we were trying to portray, the message we were trying to get across. And that's why you see what we saw this year in, in the protests. Can you tell me from a from a personal perspective, what your interactions with police have been throughout your life? Because I think they've likely been a lot different than mine, for example. Yeah, uh, I think that, you know, indigenous people and uh, black people in general are kind of treated a little bit differently. And by a little bit, I mean a lot. Um, just simply how we're looked at by the police. Um, we're looked at differently when we walk by them. When we go to nightclubs, we're uh, embraced very differently uh, than a group of Caucasian kids would be. Um, so our, our experience is very different. You know, when a police officer looks at us, we, we see him looking at us negatively and not someone who could help us. Um, we've experienced police brutality. Uh, we've experienced uh, harassment. We've experienced carding. Um, so, and we, we don't want to point the finger at all police officers. We want to make that clear. We understand that there's, there's certain individuals that shouldn't be on the force, and uh, that's what we're pushing for. We appreciate the police officers that do their job and are just out here trying to uh, protect and help society. We understand that. But we just need to get rid of the people that uh, view us differently and who have any sort of racism in their background. mention the term um, white privilege white people get super defensive about that how would you um, explain white privilege or or having it or in in your case not having it and how that's shaped your worldview you know I, I've experienced that too I, I see that uh, when you say white privilege you lose people uh, people tend to turn around and not want to listen uh, a lot of people take it offensive uh, a lot of people take it as you attacking them um, but really, um, I can't think of a nicer way to put it uh, besides white privilege. It's a real thing. Uh, it is something that uh, needs to be addressed. I think a lot of people are subconscious and don't fully understand what they're doing. It's, uh, it's similar to us with able bodies. We don't have to think about how someone with a disability has to get down the street that day or how someone uh, in a wheelchair has to get down the stairs or get over the fence or get on the elevator. We are lucky, we are privileged that we don't have to think about those things daily. We don't have to think about what someone in a wheelchair has to go about their day with. And that is luck, that is privilege, and that is not, it's not that we're against people in in wheelchairs but I still acknowledge the fact that I'm privileged that I have all my limbs working and I have all my body parts able able to work so I think that's that's the best way I can put it for to try to put it in, into perspective for someone because we all have privilege in some way and just white privilege happens to be fairly prominent in all of society a lot of times when you talk about race uh, it leads to debates it leads to arguments it leads to disagreement um, but all we ask is for people who don't really experience it is to listen uh, to what we have to say and listen to our experiences and be sympathetic towards our view. Do you have hope for the city going forward for Canada when it comes to um, dealing with racism and making positive change? Absolutely. Uh, that's that's the whole reason we're doing why we, what we're doing uh, is because we feel there is a possibility for change and we are hopeful and we are thankful for all the, the support we've been receiving from people. We've received a lot of hate too. We've received a lot of death threats, you know, a lot of people disagree with our message and disagree with our movement. Um, but at the same time, we are still hopeful. Uh, anybody who, who, who saw the protests, even if you didn't see the protests, you had to have felt them. We shook the city, we shook the province, we shook the whole country. Nobody expected this from Calgary and that's what makes us hopeful. Tara Campbell, City News, Calgary.